Hello, hello, and I heard you all want to hear about artifacts and lightstones. Now to get started, artifacts are just another piece of equipment you're going to attach to your gear, and they all have their own special effects that they each possess. For example, the ones that I'm running right now are just extra AP against monsters. They're commonly used for grinding. Now, if you want to do something like PvP, you're going to need something different, or if you want to have a different build, you're of course going to want different ones. Not all monster zones can drop them, but majority of monster zones can drop some of these accessories, and each monster zone drops different ones. For example, if you went to Abandoned Monastery, you could be getting accuracy-based artifacts. Versus if you went to Ash Forest, you could only be getting max stamina artifacts. Or if you went to Bashims, you could get evasion, melee damage reduction, or melee AP. And so on and so forth. A lot of these areas will drop them, and you're going to want to take a look at which ones you want, and go beyond that, and then look at what creatures you're going to need to grind to grab these. They drop kind of similar to accessories, so they don't drop too frequently, but you still do get them decently often. In fact, if you have too many of them, you can even process them into purified lightstones, which we'll talk about that in just a moment when we start covering the lightstone section of this. If you go to Garmoth.com and you take a look at artifacts right here in the top corner, and then you select specifically artifacts, it will show you every single one of the artifacts that you can get and from which zones you can get them. But for example, if you specifically want extra AP against monsters, it'll show you every area that drops them. Now, these are the bosses that drop them, but here's the monster zones that drop them. For extra monster AP, Krutuga, Ancient Ruins, you could also get them from other special stuff, but Krutuga ain't bad for money in any other sense either, so it is definitely worth going for. Now, personally, in my opinion, the best area to grind for all these accessories would be Krutuga Ancient Ruins, mainly because this area isn't the worst for money as you can get both Layton's Power Stone and you can get a Tongered Earring. It drops a decent amount of Caphras, it drops a decent amount of Trash Loot, a decent amount of sealed, ancient black, er, sealed Black Magic Crystals, and it can drop an Elkar. All these different things combined with the ability to drop a ton of these accessories, it makes it a pretty decent spot and you can grind it off season. Now, if you're more advanced and you want some of the mo extra monster AP ones, or you want to do some of that, and you don't know where to grind because you want to make some money or EXP or profit off that, Jade Starlight is a decent one, not for EXP, but it is decent for money since it is a really good aggro spot, and there's also several daily quests that allow you to get about 70 Kafros about one hour a day and it can drop the extra AP against monsters. In fact, this is how I got all mine. It took me about three hours to get four of these. It's not too difficult and it can take longer, just depends what drops you have. Now that's enough about the artifacts. You can go take a look at all the things that you might want to do with them later. Personally, it's just up to opinion of what you want to grab, primarily because there's a lot of good ones between magic AP, melee AP, range AP, accuracy based ones, extra AP against monsters, basically a whole bunch of different things that allow you to do all these different situations. For example, if you want to do PvP, you're of course not going to want an extra monster AP one, but if you're doing monster grinds, you may want an extra AP against monsters. So it's personal opinion. I would recommend just going through the list on Garmoth.com, seeing what you want to do. Now it comes to lightstones. Lightstones are frequently dropped throughout the game, and some can be quite cheap. For example, if you want a Claws Lightstone, which is used in one of the good sets, it is quite cheap, but there are some that are certainly expensive. For example, if you want a Shrek Lightstone, that's going to cost you a lot, and you're going to be pre-ordered for a decent amount of time. Lightstones are something you add on to accessories. For example, right now, you can see to the left that I have several lightstones attached to this accessory. You can attach two per accessory, and in total, you get about four lightstones to make a complete set. Once you make a complete set, it adds the set bonus with the other bonuses that it has. So, for example, what I'm running right now is just four lightstone of wind alert combats because it is just a extra XP accessory. What this does is it adds a 25% times 4, so 100% combat EXP, plus a set bonus of 300% to give you an extra 400% combat EXP. It's one of the best ones to have for grinding, and I definitely recommend it, because 
if you're grinding something like trees or lower gyphons and this is saying that you have enough base ap and all that stuff to do lower gyphons without actual combat based ones then it is good for exp and leveling up they also drop very commonly in fact i don't even know where i got this one it just kind of appeared in my inventory now there are a lot of sets and it can be very overwhelming in fact i think there's well over a hundred different sets that you can choose from probably more than that that is where this little picture comes in i looked at this i liked it quite a bit there are some things i would definitely change with it as it doesn't cover all the sets that i would definitely talk about but it definitely gives you a foundation of what you're going to be doing for example if you want to do some pvp and you want to go evasion then here's a nice little set for that now of course you're going to switch it out for whatever accuracy you're doing for example if you're a ranger you're going to want range accessories for accuracy now if you're doing pvp and you want dr here's a dr one and it just shows all this stuff. I would use this to form your different things and then change it up based off of what you see. One of the things you're probably gonna be doing most is probably either this section here or this section here. Let me show you these sets real quickly. Now there's the wild for specifically monster AP. There's the wild for humans, the wild for demi-humans, and the wild for common sylvian. The wild normally is three, predations which isn't too hard it's just about 18 mi million coins for all three of them combined but then you also need an iridescent light stone which is quite expensive right now at 600 million and then for the human one it costs roughly 790 million for each one of the light stones which is very expensive and this will cost you roughly 3 billion for the human set or the demi human one which is also decently expensive and will cost you about 2 billion and the combat sylvian damage one which will cost you about the same as the demi human one overall what you're mostly going to be grinding is monsters anyway so the wild will definitely help you in that if you want to go that way now there are a couple other sets i would recommend the set is called skill master skill master is good because it's pretty cheap there are some that can be expensive the lungs marked in rage are really cheap and will cost you not even 18 mil for all of them combined but the frenzy one is 270 mil although this is kind of the medium set there is a better one but it requires a strike crystal and as i showed you before the strike crystal is very expensive at 5 billion by itself now this one's pretty good because it gives you a solid 10 ap 16 accuracy 100 stamina and 2.5 all special attack extra damage which keep in mind this is 8 ap less than the other set i showed you for the monster damage it costs less it gives a shit ton of stamina and accuracy as well and it also gives all special attack extra damage so this one can be even better in certain situations and it doesn't give specific damage so you can use it for all different types of monsters whether it be monsters or humans or demi-humans comma sylvian monsters or even other players it can still work against them as well this being the case you could also stick it on a light zone that is useful for grinding and for pvp for example if you use a artifact that is melee ap or melee accuracy that could be used for either and the set can also be used for either so that would be good to do if you're specifically looking to grind then this one can be iffy it's good but it can also be improved upon but overall this one is pretty good if you're trying to get started with it overall i would say this is quite accurate as to what you're going to be looking for from your light zones so i would follow this and then maybe considering the other set i showed you because that one can also be pretty good so we've talked about what sets you want to run and what artifacts you want to run how to get artifacts but we haven't really talked about how to get light zones have we well to be honest there's many ways to get light zones for example by grinding you can get imperfect light zones which by either spending 20 million or having guru alchemy and using the alchemy ingredients yourself you can indeed make light zones using imperfect light zones and sell them or use them for yourself depending on which one you want to do now when you do this it instead of giving you a light zone it gives you a purified light zone of fire in this case this is made with an imperfect light zone of fire if you made a imperfect light zone of earth and made a purified light zone of earth with it 
different things such as that. Now, let's say we're using the imperfect light zone of fire and we made a purified light zone of fire. This gives you a nice little gambling option of you can either sell the imperfect light zone of fire for around 10 million, not really making profit if you're doing Dallas Shine by giving them 20 million, which is why nobody really uses the Imperfect Light Zones of Fire unless they are a guru alchemist, and even then it can be a little bit iffy. Now the thing about it is once you get the Purified Light Zone of Fire, or in general if you have a Purified Light Zone, which is kind of similar, it's literally just the same thing, but in general this one can give any of the light stones whether it be flora wind earth or fire once you open it it will give you a random light stone any of these sets for example if you have a fire one if you open it it will give you a random fire light stone as i said you can get the imperfect light stones through grinding but there are other methods to getting the whole versions of them for example weekly bosses over in land of the morning light can drop you some of the purified light stones you can melt down artifacts to get one to two purified light zones or combine the artifact using one artifact, one ancient power red shard, one ancient seal black shard, and combine all those together to make two to three purified light zones. I would recommend the first option of making one to two using only the artifact if you have extra artifacts. There are some quests to give them. In the suggested tab, it is called DAS, welcoming gift, artifacts, and light zones. You can do this. And I believe this one is good because you can also get a extra AP against monsters without grinding for it. As well as also, always, always pick a purified light zone of fire. Fire light zones are more worth it than any other light zone as they're the only ones that go above 2 billion and two of them go up to 5 billion. I also get plenty of these artifacts from it, though majority of the time you're just going to be getting 5 million from them, so it can be even more profitable to just sell them as is. You can also get them from weekly guild bosses and from some world bosses, as well as some field bosses. A lot of bosses, really. Anyway, that covers everything you're going to need to know about light zones and artifacts. Remember to look at this for any of the sets that you might want to run and to just scroll through Garmoth.com's little list of every single one of the light zone effects because it can be helpful. And make sure you know which artifacts you're gonna wanna run because different ones can be used in different ways. And I will see y'all later. Make sure you like, subscribe, show the video off to friends, turn on notifications, do anything you're gonna do. And I will see y'all later. Goodbye, everybody.